Hello everyone. Thank you for joining. I am Jamal Arif and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. Today we are going to talk about IPsec VPN. This is a level 200 course, so it's highly recommended that uh, you already go through a level 100 course on connectivity where we talk the basics of uh, connectivity options on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. This is our safe harbor statement so i'll give you a minute to just read through the statement all right so the objectives for this course is to basically go into a detail of ipsec vpn connectivity option on Oracle cloud infrastructure uh, what are the concepts that are involved in it and how do you basically uh, create an IPsec VPN and what's the workflow associated with it. We'll also take a look at some of the uh, redundancy options with VPN and some best practices that if you are having a VPN connection with OCI, what are some of the best practices that you can follow. At the end, we'll have a, a quick demo of uh, AWS and OCI VPN connectivity that you can do using the VPN service. Once again, this is a level 200 course and it's highly recommended that uh, the prerequisite for this course is taken, which is a connectivity level 100 course. So let's quickly recap. What are the different connectivity options when you have workloads running within your virtual cloud network? So the first option is that if you have your workloads within your within a virtual cloud network in OCI, you can connect to those over the public Internet. You can attach uh, reserved public IPs or ephemeral public IPs to your workloads and then directly access those over a public internet. Of course, there are some necessary components that you need to have within your virtual cloud network like internet gateway, uh, an opening ports of firewall and security list to actually allow that connectivity. The second option is using the IPsec protocol to have a secure, private and encrypted method there are two main options using the IPsec VPN. You can either use the managed VPN service by Oracle. And this is something that we are going to discuss today in the session. The second option is uh, just running a software VPN uh, on a OCI compute instance. So there are a bunch of uh, VPN uh, open sourced uh, softwares that are available and you can run any of those any one of those on top of an OCI compute instance that's not a managed service but yes you are managing the VPN yourself the third option is using the uh, fast connect service so the fast connect service gives you a private dedicated connection uh, and with fast connect there is a consistent network experience and you can have port speeds of 1 gig or 10 gig and or, or increments of 1 or 10 gig as well there is also an sla associated with with the fast connect service so we went through a number of different options of connectivity with oracle cloud infrastructure now let's talk about what are some of the considerations that you can take that you should take when you are designing your networking infrastructure and based on those considerations you can choose that what uh, makes sense for your design so for the first question that you should ask yourself is that what kind of bandwidth or throughput your application require? Because that would help you des decide that whether you should choose either, for instance, a VPN connection or you need a dedicated private fast connect connection. Secondly, is your application latency? Does latency uh, matter? Do you are you OK with uh, different latency numbers going throughout the day or you need a specific latency for your application? What, are, what is your plan around redundancy? Now, when you design your networking infrastructure, it is definitely recommended by Oracle that you have redundancy in your networking infrastructure, not only on the virtual cloud network part, but also on the connectivity part of your infrastructure design. That if you are, have a single connectivity options within OCI, then that means that that becomes a single point of failure. So you should avoid and plan your redundancy on the connectivity options as well. And as we go through this session and a couple of other sessions on Fast Connect as well, we'll discuss about some of the redundancy that is inbuilt within the service and how you can design your networking infrastructure that it's redundant and you are avoiding the single point of failure. Moving on, 
what's the security uh, requirement from from your application perspective do you need a private dedicated connection do you need a, an encrypted connection or you're okay with just a public connection over the internet and then how do you see your services or application growing because if if you need the ability to dynamically scale up your application your your connectivity option with OCI then you need to design your infrastructure right from the start in a way that, which helps you dynamically scale up or down your bandwidth needs accordingly so these are some of the key considerations that you should take when you are designing your networking infrastructure so now that we have looked into the different uh, models of connectivity options and also uh, taken a look at some of the considerations that you need to make before you design your networking infrastructure now let's talk about ipsec vpn on oci so ipsec vpn is a managed vpn service which securely connects your on-premise data center to the oracle cloud infrastructure virtual cloud network through an ipsec vpn connection the ipsec vpn connect the ipsec itself you know that it's a protocol suit that encrypts the entire ip traffic before the packets are trans transferred from the source to destination so it makes sure that your remote connectivity is secure and encrypted normally you will see that with ipsec vpn the bandwidth is around 250 megabits per second uh, but your mileage can vary depending upon your uh, location and the general internet congestion at that time the service itself is offered for free so there's no vpn service charges for the vpn service normally we have seen that uh, mostly the customers would start with a proof of concept uh, and you'll use the ipsec vpn for their connectivity between their on-premise and the oracle cloud infrastructure virtual cloud network uh, and then as they uh, move into production workloads where they need much more dedicated bandwidth or dedicated latency numbers then they can move into uh, other option of fast connect and there within fast connect that there are different options uh, based upon whatever your use case is and as we go through in the next design you'll see more on the redundancy but uh, whenever you create a v ipsec vpn connection on oci we create multiple redundant tunnels on OCI headend uh, just to provide redundancy these tunnels are physically and logically isolated I'll go into a bit more detail on this in the next couple of slides so now that we have gone through the basics of IPsec VPN let's go and talk about some of the concepts or some of the uh, key objects that are created when you are creating the IPsec VPN connection the first is a dynamic routing gateway so as you have must have seen uh, read and uh, gone through it in the previous uh, lesson 100 as well a dynamic routing gateway is a virtual router uh, which is basically a gateway into your virtual cloud network from your on-premises network so when you are using an ipsec vpn to connect to your on-premise network and the vcn the traffic actually goes through the dynamic routing gateway uh, from a networking engineering perspective you can think of drg as the vpn head end on the oci side once you have created the dynamic routing gateway you also attach that dynamic routing gateway to your virtual cloud network either to the console or the api uh, and you also add one or more route rules that route the traffic from your vcn to the dynamic routing gateway without this attachment and the route rules the traffic will not flow between your vcn and your dynamic routing gateway and at the end on your on-premises network the second key uh, object is the customer premises equipment so at your end of the ipsec vpn connection is the actual router in your on-premise network that is what we call as a customer premises equipment within the oci vpn uh, concept when setting up your vpn you have to create a virtual representation of that router uh, we call it as a cpe device basically it's a cpe object uh, and when you are creating the CPE object, it contains some basic information. Uh, you provide the basic information like uh, just a re, uh, uh, any name and then the public IP address of your CPE object, which is your uh, router, actual router on your end. Once you ha have created the CPE object and you have the dynamic routing gateway uh, also attached and created in your uh, OCI console, from there onwards, you can go ahead and create an IPsec VPN connection 
between your dynamic routing gateway and your own actual router, which is a CPE. And when you create a IPsec tunnel, we create multiple redundant IPsec tunnels, which are logically and physically isolated. And each tunnel has information uh, which is required when you set up the, uh, when you configure your on-premises router. So it has an IP address and a secret key information. When you create the IPsec connection uh, of your VPN, you also must specify one or more static routes. Uh, within the static route, you could actually specify a CIDR of your on-premises network or some specific subnets within your network that you need to communicate with your virtual cloud network. Uh, within the documentation, you will see some of the suggestions and best practices that how do you specify uh, specific routes. So moving forward, how do you create a OCI IPsec VPN connection and what's the workflow for it? So let's start with the basic setup that you have some workloads within a virtual cloud network in a particular Oracle cloud infrastructure region. Uh, you have a single subnet and you want to attach this particular, the workloads in this subnet to your on-premise network. There is a route table which is associated with this uh, subnet. You first of all create a dynamic routing gateway and attach that dynamic routing gateway to your virtual cloud network. You then go ahead and edit the route table of your subnet and specify the CIDR range that you want of your on-premise network that you want to route towards your dynamic routing gateway and towards your on-premise. So in this case, we have our on-premise network is 10 slash 16 network. So we have a specific route on the route table of our subnet, which says that for 10 slash 16 network, the traffic should be forwarded to the TRG, the dynamic routing gateway. We then go ahead and create a virtual representation of the CPE device on your end. So within OCI, you'll go ahead and create a CPE object and provide a name and a public IP, which is the outside public IP of your actual router sitting on your end. Once the CPE device is created, we can then go ahead and create an IPsec connection between the DRG and the CPE device on your end. When you create the IPsec connection, uh, you also need to specify a static route. Over here, I am specifying uh, a zero slash zero uh, route. It's, uh, you can specify a zero slash zero route because in that way you can later change or even expand on your on-premises network and you won't need to uh, touch or manage or change this IPsec VPN connection itself. You can always add additional routes in your subnets route table, uh, but uh, and in this way at least you won't have to change the IPsec connection static route that you have already provided to it. So, uh, the, in, in case of IPsec VPN, uh, there can be use cases where uh, you can you need to have a connectivity with a single on-premise data center or you have more than one on-premise locations and you want to have connectivity with all the different sites, all of your different sites across, across your uh, different offices. So in case of a single site, uh, the workflow or the setup is kind of similar to what we have gone earlier. So you have a virtual cloud network within OCI region. You create a dynamic routing gateway in that region and attach that dynamic routing gateway with the virtual cloud network. Uh, and then from there onwards, create a virtual CPE, which is the CPE object of your actual router on your on-premise network and create an IPsec connection. While creating the IPsec connection, you can specify the static routes, uh, include the CIDR range for your on-premise network and also include zero slash zero for any future uh, growth or expansion of your on-premise network. Now, moving on, if you have more than one site that you need connectivity with uh, your virtual cloud network, uh, you can use the same uh, DRG uh, for multiple connections as well. So for instance, in this case, you have a single virtual cloud network and you want to connect that uh, virtual cloud network resources to four different uh, sites, on-premise sites. So you have a single dynamic routing gateway, you attach that dynamic routing gateway to your virtual cloud network, uh, and then you create four different CPE objects. Each CPE object has a, a specific name, uh, like any reasonable name, and then has the public IP which is associated uh, with your CPE device in your region on your on-premise network. 
once you have created the CP device, now you can go ahead in your dynamic routing gateway and just create four different IPsec connections with each individual on-premise network. While creating the uh, different IPsec connections, you can again specify uh, the static routes which are required for each on-premise network. So for instance, in case of uh, an IPsec connection between Chicago and Dynamic Routing Gateway, you specify the 1060 network, which is your on-premise network in Chicago, and so on and so forth for other regions as well. On, your, on the route table within your virtual cloud network, which is associated with your subnet, you can again specify the specific, uh, you can specify a route rule for each of your region, uh, but your destination or target destination would, uh, would be dynamic routing gateway for all of those. The dynamic routing gateway will intelligently make the decision of routing to specific de destinations uh, accordingly. In certain uh, multi-site scenarios, you'll see that uh, some of the customers' data centers span multiple geographical locations. In that case, when you are creating a IPsec VPN connection to each geographical location, it's recommended that you use uh, a broad CIDR like 0 slash 0 uh, as well uh, as a static route in addition to the specific CIDR of that geographical location. So for instance, in this example, uh, your on-premise network has two geographical locations. You have a geographical location A and a geolocation B. Uh, each has its own specific CIDR. You create two IPsec connections with CPE of each region. And when you are creating the IPsec connection, in addition to the specific CIDR, you're also adding an additional broad CIDR that is 0 slash 0 as part of your static routes. This broad CIDR basically gives you a high availability and flexibility to your overall network design. Because in cases, for instance, your CPE1 uh, goes down, which is attached to your geographical region A, you can still get to the geographical location A through the IPsec connection, which goes to CPE2, because you have a broad uh, CIDR that uh, the 0 slash 0 network already uh, attached to the other IPsec connection as well. In another example, we can assume that uh, if your organization is adding a, a new geographical area, uh, for instance, uh, a subnet 3, uh, and initially that, that geographical area is only connected with the subnet 2, as, as we can see in the diagram as well, all you need to do is add an additional uh, route rule in your route table of your subnet, uh, and then you can also have connectivity with this new geographical region as well because of the broad CIDR that you used in your IPsec connection. All right, so let's shift gears and talk about uh, what are the redundancy models available within the uh, OC IPsec VPN connection. So within Oracle Cloud Infrastructure region, we have two different, two transit POP locations. Uh, each transit POP then has multiple high bandwidth links back to all the different availability domains in that region. So when you create a dynamic routing gateway, a virtual representation of that dynamic routing gateway is created at, at, at a single router in each transit POP. So you can see in the figure that uh, for this case, there is a DRG that is created and within each physical router on each transit POP location, that virtual representation of that DRG is created. Now, once you create an IPsec connection, a single IPsec connection, what is abstracted from the user is that we automatically create multiple IPsec tunnels with each transit POP. So the redundancy, so when you create a single IPsec connection on OCI end, it is automatically done because we are creating multiple IPsec tunnels, one with each transit POP location. In this case, if for instance, one of the transit POP location goes down, you'll still have another IPsec tunnel that is active and serving traffic and can get to all your workloads in all the different availability domains with that, within that region. We also uh, recommend that you configure your on-premise router to support all these, like uh, both the tunnels which are created when you create a single IPsec connection. And we also use asymmetric routing across these tunnels that make up the complete IPsec connection. So we should configure the same kind of configuration on your on-premise side as well. 
In this connection, you can also see that from Oracle Cloud Infrastructure perspective, we have redundancy on the OCS side. So you have two IPsec tunnels which are terminating on two different transit pop locations and two different routers, physical routers. However, there is still a single point of failure on the customer uh, premises equipment. So you have a single CPE device which is connected to both the IPsec tunnels and if that fails, then your remote connectivity is down with the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So for high availability, it is recommended that you have multiple CPE devices on your uh, on your on-premise side as well and then you create multiple IPsec tunnels with, uh, with, with the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. In that way, you'll have you don't have any single point of failure on the on your end on the on on the on-premise side and then on the oci head end side you have multiple tunnels four ipsec tunnels basically connecting to two different physical routers and in a different transit pop location so just a quick uh, uh, like screenshot demo of uh, creation of the ipsec vpn so first of all when you create a customer premises equipment you just provide a, a compartment name uh, a name of the CPE device or CPE object that you are creating and then you just provide the public IP address of your CPE. Once you have created the CPE device, uh, you can go ahead and create a dynamic routing gateway. When you create the dynamic routing gateway, it's again pretty uh, simple. If you So if you follow the console, you just provide the compartment uh, in which the IPsec connection would be created, uh, the name, and the CPE device that you created uh, and then uh, what's the static route that is uh, that is part of your IPsec connection? You can attach more than one static route here as well as you can see from the connection. Once you have created the IPsec connection, you'll see that there are multiple IPsec tunnels that are created. So you and when you and for each IPsec tunnel that is created, you'll see two information. One is the IP address, the public IP address, and the secret key which is associated with it. Now you can take these two information and then provide it to your network engineer on your side and they'll configure uh, the uh, the configuration on their actual router. Uh, in the public documentation, there are a number of different uh, physical configurations available for your on-premises uh, router. And you can see that whichever router that you ha have, what are the configurations that you want, that, that you require to set up this complete IPsec connection. This actually completes our section on IPsec VPN. So we went through what is IPsec VPN, uh, how do you create an IPsec connection uh, using the VPN service, uh, what are the different single site and multi-site scenarios that you can uh, deploy, uh, and what are the different redundancy models uh, within the IPsec VPN service. Now let's move ahead and talk about uh, some of the typical networking scenarios that we see when we talk to customers uh, every now and then. So the first is uh, a, a very common scenario where you are just utilizing your resources within virtual cloud network uh, for public connectivity. So in that case, what you do is that you create a basic virtual cloud network and provide a specific CIDR range. You create an internet gateway within your virtual cloud network. Uh, you create a route rule uh, within uh, the route table. So it can be the default route table which is created with the virtual cloud network or you can create a, uh, an, a new route table and associate a route rule which forwards all the default traffic to the internet gateway. You edit your security lists so that it allows connectivity from external uh, and you can connect to your workloads internally which are sitting inside your virtual cloud network. Once you have created the security list and route table, you can create a public subnet and associate the security list and the route, tab route table with that uh, public subnet and create an instance or create resources within that public subnet. In this way, uh, if your use case is just having public subnet and, uh, and connectivity with the internet, you'll be able to connect to your resources over the public internet. There are a number of different use cases where you do not want any uh, public connectivity with your work with with the workloads that you have within the cloud and you only want to have private connectivity with your on-premise data center in that case uh, what's what 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 is the general workflow that we follow so we create a virtual cloud network and you provide a specific cidr range uh, just make sure that that cidr range is not overlapping with your on-premise network 
create a dynamic routing gateway and attach that dynamic routing gateway to your virtual cloud network. Within your virtual cloud network, now you can create a route table uh, and that this route table then later on you can associate with the subnet of your choice. Within, the, within that route table, specify a route rule which can be either a default route rule because you don't have any traffic going towards the internet or you can also specify a specific uh, CIDR which is your on-premise CIDR and, and the target of this uh, the CIDR should be the DRG so that to connect to your on-premise network all the traffic goes to the DRG and all the resources forward the traffic to the dynamic routing gateway. Create the security low risk rules and edit them. So for instance, if you have some Oracle databases which are running inside the private subnets within the virtual cloud network and you want to connect to them, just open up the port 1521 for the Oracle databases so that they can have that connection. Create a private subnet. When you create a private subnet, there won't be any public IPs get, get associated with your workloads. It would be completely private and you would only connect with your own data center, with your on-premise equipment over the dynamic routing gateway. Once you have done this on the virtual cloud network side and your dynamic routing gateway is set up, you can then go ahead, create the CPE device and create that IPsec connection and have that uh, secure and uh, uh, encrypted connectivity with your on-premise network and the, your resources within the cloud. In a number of situations, uh, there are use cases where you not only require connectivity with your on-premise network, but you also require connectivity of some of your workloads within your virtual cloud network to the public internet. And you want to get to the public internet directly instead of routing back to your on-premise network. That case is also very common and it's a very common use case that we see within when you are designing your networking infrastructure. The design of such a design is case, uh, the architecture of such a design case is shown in the figure. So you can see that you have uh, some, of, some of your subnets are private subnets and some of your subnets are public subnets. The private subnets have a route table and a security list associated with them, which uh, allow connectivity to your on-premise network. So in the route table, the destination CIDR for your private subnets is the dynamic routing gateway and the destination CIDR and the route target for your public subnets is the internet gateway because they need to get to the internet. So the idea over here is that uh, in a lot of situations, uh, these infrastructure components of your virtual cloud network will give you the ability to uh, be much more flexible and choose whichever design makes sense for your application needs. All right, so this actually completes our session on the IPsec VPN connectivity. Thank you for joining and see you next time.